Welcome to Maintainer's Garage. I'm Bags. We're inside my uh, 2004 LX470. My uh, climate control has been having this intermittent error of check the connection of the air conditioner off and on for about six months now. Also, the uh, trip information, miles per gallon, that kind of thing hasn't been working on it. And down here, the outside temperature hasn't been working. I have an aftermarket stereo, so I assume that my stereo wouldn't be working either, but since I have an aftermarket stereo down here, that problem's uh, not affected. Anyway, if you do a little bit of internet research on this, you'll find that the Prius has this, and the uh, LX470 has it as well. There's a very small window, 2003, 2004, if I remember correctly, that has this problem. And there's, a there's several write-ups on the internet about this problem and how to fix it. There's one particular one on uh, the I, I Hate Mud form, which is the letter I, the letter H, and then the number eight, and then MUD, M-U-D. And it was uh, Dom Smith did a great write-up on it with a lot of pictures. And I'm actually going to attempt to fix this using his picture tutorial. And I'm doing a video tutorial on a picture tutorial. Yeah, so anyway. Um, I just want to be clear that I'm not some super smart guy that figured this out or whatever. I want to make sure I give credit to somebody else for, you know, figuring this out and going through the process. And I'm going to just show you in video form of how to do it. It's going to start by taking off this trim piece, removing these two, and then there's some 10 millimeter bolts that hold this in that you're going to be able to pull off. First thing we're going to do before we do that, though, is we're going to turn the car off and disconnect the negative post on the battery while we play with this. Our negative terminal on our battery has been disconnected. One 10 millimeter bolt pulled that, just loosen it up, pull it right off. And I apologize if there's a lot of background noise. One of my neighbors apparently is trying to dig a hole straight through the center of the earth. Uh, Cause there ain't, I saw multiple backhoes and there's a whole bunch of dump trucks hauling dirt back and forth. I mean, an another option would be a wag. I mean, another option would be they were building a retaining wall, but I don't think that's likely. Anyway. So we're going to start by pulling off this plastic uh, trim right here. We always use our handy dandy uh, trim removal tool. We've just taken this off recently uh, to change out this switch. There's some retention clips there, 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 and there, and there. So you can just kind of get down in there and kind of just pry slightly. And as it starts to come out, it'll just kind of pop. And you just slow and steady wins the race on this one. And there it is. You've got an electrical connector there. Yeah, come on. Electrical connector there. And those are just push that retention clip down, pull out. And maybe, just maybe, I'll finally put this trim piece in here after two and a half, three years, whatever it is. Now you can see these, these vents literally just pull right out. And no electronics, no nothing, just pull them out. And I'm just going to put them down here, back here. That way, number one, I can't lose them. Number two, I can't step on them and crush them. And that's two things you don't want to do with parts that you pull out. Lose them, break them. Remember that. There'll be a test later. Now, I believe these are four 10 millimeter bolts here, or Phillips head screws, kind of depending on your situation, how you want to pull them out. Yep, 10 millimeter. Uh, lefty Lucy, as you pull these bolts out, you're going to end up having to pull this forward. I've got a couple uh, rags right here I'm going to put on top of this to try to not smash all this up. And I may even have to move the shift lever with the battery disconnected just next to where it says park, or just, I'm sorry, just forward of where it says park. There's a little plastic trim cover. You pop that off. You'll be able to, there's a manual release button. You can push that down and manually move the gear selector level. Um, if you choose to do that, and I may end up choosing to do that just depending on how this comes out. You want to make sure you pull the e-brake on the car and set some chocks. That way your vehicle doesn't move. All right, so lefty loosey these out. And we're going to put these bolts in these cup holders right here because that's an excellent little holder for us. All right. So we've got those 10 millimeter bolts uh, removed. This is ready to kind of slide out. And as stated earlier, got a little handy dandy uh, microfiber towel here. And let's just, uh, yeah. there you go. Like those two little retention clips right there. You want to pull kind of straight out. And there's one of the dump trucks 
on that and that's when you've got all these wire harnesses back here that you just got to kind of disconnect one at a time. From my previous experience on uh, disassembling this entire central console to chain to install this head unit, these plugs you don't have to label. If you just pay attention, it's very user friendly when it comes to putting plugging them all back in. The ones on the top are it'll be clear that they're the ones on top and they're idiot proof. That way you can't plug in the wrong plug on top with you know there's not two plugs next to each other or even close to each other that are same plug so you don't have to worry about labeling these they're pretty good about that they're just your standard push down the retention tab that moves down the locks and you can just pull them aft backwards or towards the front of the car and they will come right out ah, there we go and there's one little ground wire on this side. If you can see this red wire, and it's a ground pin right here on the side. Uh, you may not have that on your car. Um, this has some aftermarket stuff built into it. Yeah, so we'll find out what size that is and get that undone. It doesn't look like a 10. And it's definitely not a 10. It might be an eight. Yep, it's an eight millimeter. And in this kind of faster, what you want to do, anything like this that you have to remove, you want to reinstall back into where you got it from. That way it will help prevent you from getting confused later. Like I put those four fasteners here in the cup holder just because they look very specific and they they've got a weird taper on the end they've got this built-in washer so i won't forget where these go as you do things like this if you you know have to remove a fastener to pull something off just put it back where it goes so that way when i go to reassemble this i'll be like oh where does this go where does this ground wire go and i'm like oh well, it goes right here all right so we'll keep uh disconnecting plugs and we're just starting from the top, working our way down. Ah. And some of these, you're just going to have to push really hard on that uh, locking section. Because depending on your application, as stated a couple years ago, I took this apart. You know, yours might not have ever been apart. So trying to pull these out will be a little rough going and then with my aftermarket head unit I got to unplug it most of the wiring is uh, like the uh, RCA cables for example for the amplifier they're all labeled because I labeled them when I installed them grab that move that so now we've got a small situation with the head unit and We've just got a couple of bolts right here. They should be eight millimeters as well. Put that one in our cup holder. We're not because it's it only holds the radio in, so we're not going to put them back into the radio. We'll just put them there in the cup holder. I'll remember exactly what it is and where they go. Then this radio can pull straight backwards and pull all the way out. You're gonna have to kind of manipulate it around this uh sheet metal a little bit just because it's slightly wider but it will go without any damage and then that can sit well, it's, ah. take our little rag our head unit can sit right there now we have this whole assembly and we need to get into the guts of this to uh, fix it so now we're going to go into the garage and uh, play with that and yeah don't uh, judge me on all of that all right so we've got this uh assembly out of here yours will be a little different obviously the radio your uh factory radio would be right here clearly i don't have that we want to separate this from this metal frame so we'll start with uh, these screws right here and then do the other ones on the other side eight millimeter fasteners and hopefully the uh, dump trucks and bulldozers and cranes and earth movers and everything else uh, gives me a little bit of a break. 
And the whole thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to end up disassembling this uh, MFD. And if you just remember, the ones closest to the MFD are the black fasteners, and the ones behind those, furthest away from the MFD, are the gold fasteners. Or if you're like me, uh, and you videotape this, you'll be able to go through and look at it uh, after the fact when you're re reassembling everything and be like, oh man, where were those uh, fasteners at? Yeah, exactly. All right. And I've done some work like this because this is going to end up, supposedly this is a cold solder joint is the problem on this. And I've actually fixed that on my uh, 2002 Corvette. I, uh, the HVAC was dim. Very similar problem with the uh, cold solder joint. And I ended up disassembling that and I made a video on that. But I'm just hoping to fix this. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. I tried to fix the lights on my uh, antenna switch and hazard switch and the center diff switch and I jacked that away. So we're just uh, hoping for the best here. So we've got those fasteners out and oh, oh I didn't even have to take that out. I thought that was I thought this was all one piece. No problem. So, we will put these someplace safe, not to absolutely jack them up. And now we're left just with our display here. Now is when I need to go look at the little tutorial about what we're doing. All right, so I've looked in the tutorial and it talks about disassembling this and there is one fastener there, two, three, four, and five. And thanks Jason for the uh, screwdriver set, find the right tip, and pull these out. And I'm probably going to end up getting a container because I'm just terrified. I'm working on my little table here that I put some microfibers on, clearly, but I'm just convinced I'm going to blast. I'm going to knock these off and never see these fasteners again. And before I, I'm just going to shut up and do it. This is why I have Ziploc containers or uh, Tupperware containers. All right, so we've got a Tupperware container with a lid. We'll put these fasters in there because I'm just, I know I'm going to end up doing something, especially with these tiny little things. I'll kick them on the garage floor and I'm going to cry like a little girl. Anywho, let me just remove these fasteners, all five of them. Just make sure you're using the correct tip. And I, did, I just realized I didn't get a good picture of it. This is a number one Phillips head. So that fits perfectly. All right, down to the last fastener. All right, that's done. So this back cover comes off now. And again, we'll put this someplace we cannot uh, hurt it, step on it, bend it, what have you. Before we pull these one, two, three, four fasteners out. We have to disconnect this connector, this connector, and that connector. And the reason you want to do these first is that way that holds the board down. So you're not having to make, you're not having to fight the board as you pull these up. So this one, uh, come on. Ah, this one should just come right out. If you grab it, yeah. It's got a little, it's got a couple of flanges right on the edge, a little lip there. You can grab that with your fingernails and pull or Use a small Phillips head if need be. And then on these, you can just, uh, let's see if I can try to get that in the camera accurately. So there's the housing right there. And right there, there's a little lip, there's a gap, and then the lip of the connector. And the same thing applies to the white one. It's a little harder to see, but there's a little flange right there that you can get this under and I'm going to guess that this is going to cost me 500 to a thousand dollars used from a junkyard eBay what have you so I'm going to treat this thing like 500 to a thousand dollars I do not want to throw in the trash can why am I saying it that way so when you start messing with these plugs you just go really really gentle and you just try to work one edge and then the other edge up and they come off you just grab that 
you grab this little flange right here, the edge of this lip, and you just lift up just on that gently. And the same thing here. You can take a bright light and look in there if you can't find it, and you can see it. You can just stick this in there, and you can just kind of pry up a little bit. Then on the other, other side, you do the exact same thing. And just go easy. Oh, that end came up. And if it looks like I'm leveraging against anything on this board, I'm not. I'm, I'm doing my best to hold this and turn it like that and leverage just my, the power of my hand and not trying to apply. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there it is. Not trying to apply a leveraging force on this circuit card. Circuit cards don't appreciate that. All right. Now with that done, there's a connector under here, but we have to remove these four Phillips head screws screws all right those are in there put the lid back on now the circuit card will come out but there is a fast there is a another harness on it it's literally right under there you probably can't i don't think i can ever get it yeah if you look just yeah, right there you can see that white plug there all right as the earth movement continues our connector is right there, so I'm just going to lift up ever so gently. And I was just pulling on the card, just uh, pulling on the card right there, and that popped off. So now we have these two devices, and that went into there. So that's what we have. Okay, so as you might not be able to see here, I got this little contraption from uh, the Harbor Fraudulent, and uh, it seems to be working okay. I had to put this hammer here to balance it out, but it's got a place to hold my soldering iron. I've got the circuit card. I've got this magnifying glass that's two times in the center, and then down here at the bottom has an eight times. I'll try to throw some pictures up of this contraption, and it even has a little light in it that, yeah, you, you can definitely see that. So it's not bad for freaking $7. Uh, I had to adjust these things. I bent one of these. The, again, it's the Harbor Freight. It is what it is. You understand what you're buying. And if it works, if this works this one time for me and never works again for $7, that's a mission accomplished as far as I'm concerned. So anyway, the premise behind this whole thing is pin 60 is a cold solder joint, bad solder joint, whatever you want to call it. So I have a soldering iron. I have the smallest tip that, uh, and that's the story of my life that it came with. And I've played with this before I plug this in to make sure I could see and touch pin 60 here. And it's got a big 6-0 on the end. You can see under the regular magnifying glass, the uh, six times is much better. I have cleaned this. The key here, uh, sports fans, for those of you in the back of the class, this has a lot of water on it. It's not dry. It's wet. So when I grab the soldering tip like that and clean it off, I am not burning the bejesus out of my fingers. This is important again for those in the back with bad hearing. This is wet. So you want to clean the tip very well. Then you want to just put a dab of solder on it. And what we will do after that is literally just touch pin 60. And this is uber tiny and small. Be very careful. If you don't know what you're doing and you ruin your uh, display, not my fault, not my bad, you're bad. Fair enough? Fair enough. Ah, mother trucker, this is a tiny little thing that just needs to be flashed up a little bit. Ah, and of course this thing fell. So I'll have to hold it with one hand and solder with another. Uh, uh. Oh, there we go. I've got, I've saw the solder flash and it is a nice clean joint on there now. And I'm going to try to tighten this stupid thing up so it doesn't fall. Get my soldering iron out of here, clean it off and just make sure I didn't hurt nothing else. Yeah, that looks like a good flash solder joint. All right, that's it. Now we have to uh, put all this stuff back together. I know, story of my life, an hour worth of work for 10 seconds of fun.
But wait, there's more. All right, so we've got our board soldered. We gotta put it back in. It goes, goes in just like this. And that right there goes into that right there. So just kind of pull these to the side. Try to line it up. Make sure you don't get on that. And yeah, that looks good. So just kind of push down right there and it'll go just like that and kind of go thunk and you're in there. Then you take your screws and put those back in. Much like my Corvette HVAC system, uh, the display dimming out. Uh, not a hard job and not a lot of work to do the actual job. Just got to spend a lot of time to get there. Okay, then that goes in. I'm going to try to push evenly on both sides as it, so you can push the whole thing in square. And similar thing with these. Just kind of line it up and push down. And push down. And that's it. All right, now we're, we're ready to put this cover back on. And if you remember, we have one, two, three, four, that was five screws for this. Five, that's what it was. This is one of those, I, I'm just going to kind of start each fastener a little bit and then tighten them all down. All right, now they're all started, I will snug them all down. All right, now we're just ready to reassemble this to the uh, housing. All right, so if we remember this little dealy do, uh, this goes like so. And the, there is a little, uh, There's a little nipple right there. There we go. Right there on both sides. There's a little tab those go into. And, and that goes on. If we remember correctly, and we do because I've looked at the video uh, footage as stated, the black fasteners go forward. The gold fasteners go into that. So we'll just start these two. And before you tighten this all the way down, get the other one in. Because it has some locating nipples as well. That apparently I wasn't paying attention to. So, yeah, don't tighten this all the way down. You need these to have a little give for this. There is a locating nipple there and there and by looking at the video these go up top <laughs> you know and if you look you can see the little locating hole right there kind of on both sides for these there we go took a little bit of fidgeting and then we have these four fasteners that will start before we tighten them all the way down. And then we'll snug all those up. Saying apply, same applies to all these fasteners. Gorilla tight, gorilla torque is not what you need. Snug. Snug done. All right. We're uh, ready to shove that thing back in. Okay, so we've got our uh, display all built back together minus the head unit, the stereo going in, and I'm not going to put that in right now. All I'm going to do is connect all of these plugs up, kind of stabilize it up here, connect the battery, and then just test it a few times. And what do I mean by test it a few times? This problem was easy to see. You didn't even have to start the car. If you turn the car on, this uh, 
outside temperature normally shows up within a few seconds then obviously when you hit the climate control it will uh, show up it'll tell you hey either it's there you'll see the display it'll say check the connection it even if it's working one second and the power cycle even if it's working one second you do a power cycle it'll stop working so I'm fairly comf confident I can test this to some degree um, my intention is after I get this installed we get it all finished up I'm gonna drive I'm gonna daily drive this thing for about a week and uh, I will follow up the video with that anyway so let's plug all this stuff up and you just want to do your best here and like I said these plugs are fairly idiot proof um, and I would know because I'm a pretty big idiot Hey, 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 hey. Nope, 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 nope. Sorry, I was attacked by a freaking uh, yellow jacket, and I don't like pain, and that would have hurt, so I was getting ready to run like a little girl. But anyway. All right, so, and if you just kind of start from the bottom and work your way up, these plugs are, again, they're, they're easy to identify and they do not, they're idiot proof. We are going to have to hook this ground up. And last one. And we are in there. We're just gonna kinda set it up like that, connect the battery check her out all right so let's uh we got a security light so we know we got power all right we got an outside temperature immediately that's a good start we've got climate controls uh available to us that's a good start we've got cruising range which is normally zero that's a great so we'll cycle power And but I, we might have this licked, boys and girls. Um, as stated, I'm just going to do this a few times because this is exactly how it went down. Yeah, man. We might be in there. Now, the proof is in the long-term testing, but at least now we know we can restore our radio and restore our dash and go forward. So... That's what we're going to do, and that mother sucker ended up in the truck. Boy, i got to get the F out of here. All this is uh, my stereo's back together. Left's left, front's front, right's right, set, etc. It's all good. So now, we've just got to get this back in here. It's hard for me. To, I was playing with camera angles trying to show you this. You clearly saw all the wire bomb that was behind this. Some of it's my own doing. Some of it is just uh, Lexus because there's a whole bunch of wiring right here. So just do your best when you get this back together to make sure wires don't get crushed. I know it, it's definitely uh, 10 pounds of poop in a five pound bag, but it will go. And there's, there's little alignment locking retaining pins up here you wanna make sure you get right. And then uh, down here, there are things and, yeah, this is just a adjust, put it in, adjust, put it in, adjust, put it in. And what's happening here that you won't be able to see is this left-hand side, this flange right here is not sitting flush. The right-hand side is, so I know there's a... There's a wire harness and it's the RCA cables and things I'm just trying to manipulate. And it's just not quite working out. All these flanges are lined up. They're almost all perfectly flush, so I'm not going to be, have a huge gap and I'm gonna force the screw to bring it in because that's aluminum. You'll bend it if it's that, 
if there's too much pressure with the wire harnesses, you'll end up bending that this tab, these tabs, these ears, these flanges. It won't pull the whole thing in. It'll just bend in. That's why you want to make sure it's as flush as possible before you ever start putting fasteners in. And we just put our fasteners in. They're 10 millimeter. And the torque on these is snug. And we'll just go back over these. Make sure they're snug. Gorilla torque's not required. Just snug. All right. And just like before, we pulled this trim off and then pulled these two vents off. These vents and locking tabs, clips. Just like that. And that one. Just like that. Okay, now we get our wood trim piece. Make sure we just snap these in. They're easy. Ah, come here. All right. And now that just, they've got their little alignment pins. Set them up, come on. And we're in there. Now we just need to attach our battery cable with a uh, 10 millimeter nut. And we'll be able to test all this stuff. All right, where did our key go? Outside temperatures there, cruising range is there. Climate works. I think we're in there. One quick thing on this, turn your stereo on. Your antenna may or may not go all the way up. So then you have to manually drive it all the way up. So then that way, that you've kind of reset it. It knows it's all the way up and you're good. Uh, as stated, I'll daily drive this for a week and my closing on this will be whether this has been a good fix or not. Okay, so it's been about a week of driving the car every day, multiple trips per day, never failed once. The HVAC never failed, the outside temperature never failed, the backup camera never failed. So I believe we got her licked, uh, kids. To make it clear, this is, a, is not a simple fix, but it's not an impossible fix. You can do it. You need a soldering iron and a lot of patience, and you need to be willing to just make sure, like I said, uh, I practiced multiple times before I ever plug that soldering iron in. That pin 60 looks like kind of like this as it connects to the circuit board and that connector, and I literally took that soldering iron cold and just did this until I got to a point where it's like, okay, I'm not going to hit the board. I can, I can absolutely touch that pin. And it's just a matter of putting a little bit of solder on that tip, put, hitting that pin, watching that solder melt and coat that pin again and redoing that solder joint. And that's the fix. And it works and it's a solid fix and it's good. It's just, it's scary because it's your display and it, it's taking all that stuff apart, but I'm just another MF for as my buddy KD would say. So if I can do it, you can do it. It just takes patience and willingness to go slow and to do your best not to screw it up. And I mean that, but I'm nobody special. I'm no better than you. So if I can do this, you absolutely can do this. And thank you to Dom Smith on I Hate Mud for the picture tutorial that, that guided me to for this video tutorial. Yeah, I just want to make sure I give credit where credit is due. So, again, you can do it. Hopefully, if you have this problem, hopefully this video helps. And uh, thanks for watching Maintainer's Garage, and have a great day.